Okay, so here is the problem. So we have 10 kilogram mass attached by a rope to a six kilogram mass over a pulley. Determine the acceleration of the system and the tension in the string. Okay, so the first thing we do is, uh, let's, let's draw our pictorial representation first. And we'll think about all the forces which act on these masses. This one, this is the pulley, comes down here. So we have 10 kilograms, six kilograms. Now let's see what forces act on these six. So for the six kilogram mass, we have force of gravity, which is, let's say this is M2, M2G. So M2 equals six kilograms. So this is M1. M1 equals 10 kilograms. And we also have the tension, tension in the rope. And then for this one, we have the same tension. So this tension, it's the same magnitude, but it's Wait a second. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, this is right. Same tension. So it looks like that. But it's it's in the different direction. This to the right, this tension is up. And then we got force of gravity, which is M1G, and we got the normal force up. It's a frictionless table, so we don't include friction. Now so we got this, now we draw a free body diagram. For each of the masses, we should draw a free body diagram. So over here. So this is for M1. So we got force of gravity, M1, M1G, normal force and the tension. And now let's do M2. So for M2, we have the tension going up and we got force of gravity, M2G. So this is six kilograms, this is 10 kilograms. Okay, so now that we have our free body diagrams, is there no force that pulls a 10 kilogram to the left? There is not, because this is a frictionless surface. If there was friction, it would be towards the left. First of all, this thing is going to go down. Let's Let's put down the direction of the acceleration. It's going to be moving down, right? So this is, the acceleration is going to be like this. So this is going to go to the right. This is going to go down. If there's a friction, you could put in force of friction, kinetic, to the left. But this is a frictionless surface. Let's get rid of that. Okay, once we have our free body diagrams, we apply Newton's second law. So, x direction, sum of forces in the x direction. And we'll say to the right is positive, it's just tension. So tension equals mass times acceleration. So M1A, M1A. Oh, by the way, these are the same accelerations because they're connected by a rope, they move together. Some of forces in the y direction for mass two. We'll say down is positive because that is the direction of the acceleration. So sum of forces y is m2g minus tension, and that equals m2a. So we have these two equations, which we must solve. Two equations, we have two unknowns, the t and the a. So what we can do is take this T and put it into this equation. So we would get M2G minus M1A equals M2A. 
we want to solve this thing for A. So we put everything with A on one side. We have M2G equals M1A plus M2A. And this is just, take out the common factor A. It's M1 plus M2A equals M2G. Now we just divide both sides. Let's divide by M1 plus M2, both sides. M1 plus M2. M1 plus M2. So these M1 plus M2s cancel. So we finally get acceleration equals M2 over M1 plus M2A, G, like that. So that's our acceleration. Okay, now what about the tension? So we get, once we got A, we put it into here and we get the tension. So the tension is going to be M1 times this A, which is M2 over M1 plus M2G. So now we got the tension. Well, so we got this, and we can now put in the numbers. Uh, you could also put in the numbers earlier if you wanted to, to make it a bit easier for you. But in general, it's like this. Yeah, we can use this for any combination of masses that we have. So let's put in the numbers. Oh, we'll try. Let's try the black. So tension is going to be, so M1 is 10. So 10 times 6 over 10 plus 6 times 9.8, like that. 60 over 16 times 9.8. 60 over 16 times 9.8. Did anybody get an answer for that? 60 over 16. Thirty six point eight. So thirty six point eight newtons. That's the tension. No, you can't you could use this formula for you could use this formula for other problems, but you should really work it out for each problem each time. Don't just pick an equation. Oh, this is the this is the equation for tension. No, work it out each time. If you just pick an equation, you may not know what's going on. You may pick the wrong equation. Now let's find the acceleration. We'll put in the number. So acceleration equals 10 over 10 plus 6 times 9.8, which is 10 over 16 times 9.8. What does that give us? Six point one. Six point one meters per second squared. Okay, so those are the two things which we want to find. No, you can't use that formula on the quiz. You need to derive things, right? You need to derive things. You need to start from the equations on the formula sheet and derive it. Okay. Oh, you're right. M2 is six. Very good point. We need to make a correction. This should be six. 
So let's change that to six. Six over 16 times 9.8. Okay. Any other mistakes there? So six divided by 16 times 9.8 is 3.7 no, 3.7 meters per second squared could you show the board how do you derive the fx and fy equations okay so fx and fy equations so we look at the free body diagram so of course this is x right this is x this is y so for this one, sum of forces in the x direction, there's only one force, it's the tension. Sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. And it's acceleration in the x, we know it's, it's moving in the x direction, it's not moving in the y direction, this mass. So it's M1A. And this one, so this is x, this is y, sum of forces in the y direction. I'm saying, the down is positive because the acceleration is down. So it's going to be M2G, the force of gravity, minus the tension. M2G minus tension. That equals the mass, M2, times the acceleration. If this question had friction, how would this process change? So if we had friction, we would have another force, this by the blue. So there'd be a force here. Force of friction kinetic. So force of friction kinetic is mu k fn. So we first have to find the fn. So we would do sum of forces in the y direction for this block to get the fn. So we have this. Uh, sum of forces y equals fn minus m1g. fn minus m1g, and that equals zero because it's not accelerating in the y direction. So it equals zero. So therefore, fn equals m1g. So we take this, put it there. So force of friction is mu k m1g equals mu k m1g. So that's the force of friction. We have to add that to the free body diagram for mass one. So right here, force of friction kinetic. So that's going to change this. It's not going to be t. We're not going to have to add. It's it's going to be T minus the force of friction kinetic. So that would that would be changed. So here, what we substitute in for T, um, so before we had T is M1A, but now T is going to equal this equals. So what T would be, T would be M1A plus force of friction kinetic. So it would be M1A plus UK M1G. So this would be, we would then have to subtract minus UK M1G. And so that's what you would do. You carry on like that. What exactly does mu represent? Mu is a coefficient of friction. It's how friction is related to the normal force. It is the force of friction divided by the normal force. If mu is large, the surface has more friction. How rough an object is, perhaps, or the friction between the two different objects. It depends upon the surfaces which you have.
they are not the same thing as in statistics, no. Yes, higher the mu, the rougher the object. Okay, let's stop this one. I will stop this. How do I stop it? Oh, stop.